as Joe Biden was campaigning in Greenville. The former vice president has been heavily outspent by his competitors here. Some have many more resources than I do, but we've been raising about a million dollars a day for the last week or so. And he's literally banking on a convincing victory here in South Carolina. We win solidly here. I think it's going to raise us a lot of money as well. Only Biden and Tom Steyer plan to be here in the Palmetto State to watch returns tonight. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Charleston. New cases of the coronavirus in the U.S. and western states. The CDC has not confirmed two cases in Oregon, but along with the California patient, there are no known links to China. ABC's Kaylee Hartung is in Sacramento. The first case of unknown origin in Solano County, California. That woman now hospitalized here in Sacramento. She's on a ventilator. She is critically ill. A second case in Santa Clara County, just south of here. And overnight, we learned of cases in Oregon, the first case in that state, and another in Washington state. The CDC telling Americans to practice safe hygiene, like washing your hands. You're listening to ABC News. Two more deaths in Cuyahoga County from flu-related illnesses. The county health department says this week's victims were a 79-year-old Lakewood woman and a 33-year-old woman from East Cleveland. And it brings the total number of flu deaths in Cuyahoga County this year to 16. Last week, 103 people were in the hospital somewhere across the county with the flu. I'm Tom Moore. A couple from Wayne Township facing charges after their five-week-old baby suffered a fractured skull and broken leg this week. 24-year-old Andrew Brown and 34-year-old Chastity Cottrell have each been charged with child endangerment. The two brought the child to Cincinnati Children's Hospital on Tuesday evening, where doctors determined the injuries were not the result of an accident. The Claremont County Sheriff's Office was contacted by Children's Hospital Social Service, and they interviewed Brown and Cottrell and searched their home Wednesday. The next day, Brown contacted detectives admitting that he had dropped the five-week-old child while being assaulted by Cottrell in a domestic dispute. On Friday, Cottrell also confessed. I'm Sean Gallagher. A dedication ceremony was held Friday for the new mental health facility at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus. The Big Lots Behavioral Health Pavilion officially opens March 10th. All rooms of the new facility will have a balcony or porch so staff can take children outside. And Toledo's new plan to have all dispatch services in one location is moving forward. A board of directors meeting yesterday went over proposed bylaws. They'll have to hire an executive director and work with all agencies to get everyone on board. The next meeting is scheduled for March 14th. For more news, listen to The Daily Dive. The big news stories explained, not shouted. Listen to The Daily Dive each day on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. I'm Kyle Cornell. Filling your news feed with the top trending news at the top and bottom of the hour. Columbus's news is on News Radio 610 WTBN. If you haven't quoted Allstate lately, it's the perfect time. Now Allstate has new lower auto rates. You can get the same high quality coverage and hands on expertise now at new lower rates. Call a local Allstate agent and get a quote now. Your heart deserves world class care. So when you or someone you love has been told they have a heart condition, turn to Cleveland Clinic, the number one heart program in the nation for 25 years in a row. When you choose Cleveland Clinic, there's peace of mind knowing you have a team specialized in the most complex heart cases with an unparalleled record of successful treatments and access to the most advanced heart technology available. It's why heart patients from all 50 states and 129 countries have traveled near and far to put their trust in Cleveland Clinic. So if you or a loved one are looking for answers to a heart condition or need a second opinion, call the top-ranked heart team in the nation, Cleveland Clinic, 855-943-0297. Cleveland Clinic, every life deserves world-class care. Live from LAPD Firearms Range and Training Facility, this is On Target. The latest from the firearms industry, the products and politics that affect your hobby and liberty. This program may not be politically correct, but it is On Target. Now, your host, Eric Delbert. Good afternoon. Welcome to On Target Broadcasting Live from the studios of LEPD Firearms Range and Training Facility. That's located at 999 Bethel Road. I'm your host, Eric and guys, uh, welcome to our 2020 bonus show. If you're watching on Facebook, always a great place to watch it. You're getting a preview right now. It doesn't look like there's anyone on set, Ed, does it? Yeah, we're, we're not there. 
We're not there. Magic. It's magic. No, or actually, uh, you're getting a preview of what the new set's going to look like. This is a, um, a scaled model. It actually looks really it neat does. on Facebook. Um, you want to go ahead and move the model it, there? Eric, this, like this is radio. Thing. This is radio. Well, huh? Facebook. Facebook. That's right. So uh, if you watch okay. there, here, watch it. We're going to magically appear, Ed. Watch. Now look at that. There we are. Hello. Yes, there we up. Oh, put the model it. back up, huh? <laughs> yeah, put the model back up. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. So, guys, it is. Uh, this is the 2020 bonus show. It is leap year. Hoo Right. So this is a this yeah, is a bonus. It is. Yes. So, guys, a, while, a few years ago, actually, I think it was the last uh, political uh, era. So probably in 16 or so, we had a segment that we used to do called. Who said that? Who said that? And it basically was, it, it went to all these crazy politicians saying these off-the-wall things. And we're going to bring that back because, you know what, it's that time again with all these crazy politicians saying stuff. So we're going to jump right into that. So, Emily, there, I think you have a, a soundbite to play for us. Our streets. 150 million people have been killed since 2007 wow. when Bernie voted to exempt the gun manufacturers from liability. More than all the wars. Can you believe that, Ed? Vietnam. More than all the wars. Uh, all the, since 150 the, million. John, we have lost half the population. Wow. Yeah. What, what are we going to do? Well, but who? Yeah, I, we're, my goodness. Who 150 said that? million out of about 325. It's, it's incredible. Hey, Eric, who said that? Well, that would be Vice President Joe Candidate, Joe Biden. No way. Yes, he and, said and that. he wants to be president. And he wants to. But, but you know what? That's not all. Get this one. How about this? Uh, let's see. A guy has 12 assault weapons with bump stocks, which means you can fire them faster. You can pull the trigger faster. Why in God's name should anyone, anyone, anyone be able to own that? It's just wrong. And I promise you, as president, I'm going to get these guys. Who said that? Whoa. Again, Joe Biden. No way. So know what you're voting for. It is so important this year to know. And i tell you what, Ed, it, it is it really doesn't matter which one they put up. They're all nuts. <laughs> they are. They're, they're crazy on you this are stuff. correct, 100%. I mean, it is, it's incredible what is coming out of their mouths. I mean, it doesn't, I guess, fact doesn't have to. Well, but yet none of them will come on the show or any show and no. talk about gun rights yeah. and gun rights. Not at all. Because they know. They know people will not take the time to look up the real facts. And so they can spew this stuff. I mean, they're immune. I well, mean, they, you know, and you're they right. And the thing that upsets me the most is when he says stuff like this. And of course, I mean, you're in a debate scenario and you're throwing around numbers, but it's out there now. And for people who don't know, I'm it's stuck in their him. mind. Yeah, you know, he said 150 knows. million people have died because Joe knows. Joe knows. Yeah. Well, here's another thing you added to that, Eric. It was in the same thing he said. He he wants you to know because I promise you, as he said. Um, that I'm the only guy who's beaten the NRA, and I did it twice, and gun manufacturers, I'm coming for you, period. That, I mean, so that was his not quote. After the guys. That was his yeah. quote. That was his quote in the uh, vice at a or CNN the, town hall meeting. Right. Yeah. I mean, how can you, I mean, you basically, how many people work in the firearms industry? Because he just <laughs> isolated all of them, not that they were going to well, vote for him remember, anyways. He is the one who said, if you need to scare him away, just go on the balcony Two blasts, and they're gone. Right. Through your front door. That that's, was another, you know. that's all you need. And, yeah. you, and you rack your slide. You rack, rack the slide. You rack the slide. Yes. On, on a, a double, double barrel. barrel. On a double barrel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are the owners of LEPD, firearms range and training facility, and our active law enforcement. But for one hour on Saturdays, we put together a group of firearm experts to discuss new products in the market, training tips, and oftentimes political topics surrounding the Second Amendment. Our commitment, though, has always been to bring you the facts about our industry and ultimately help our listeners and our customers with safe, responsible ownership of firearms. Today on the show, well, first of all, did you guys know, and JC, I, you probably don't know this, after our show last week discussing about which firearms are, are good for women and stuff, we had several come in this week after listening to the show, and they bought firearms that we talked about. Yes, sir. Really? Yes. Well, well, that's, well, that's excellent. I mean, we're really happy for the women, and we're happy to provide that knowledge. And, again, folks, we got picked by the National Shooting Sports Foundation as the number one store in all the Central Ohio to uh, get your concealed carry gun. So come on in. 
Got to love yep. that. So uh, today on the show, though, we're going to take a step back. Well, actually, we have a lot of news and updates to get to. But at 1230, we are going to talk a little bit about range etiquette and what to bring to the range. What's in your range bag? We haven't done that for a while, so we thought it would be a good time to get caught up on that. And Popo has the Gun of the Week, sponsored by Jackson Egress Windows. I'm a little disturbed about this because I think it's my gun. It's always the same. <laughs> we pass around firearms between us so often that and sometimes many times on the same firearm that I lose track. We need to combine our gun logs. I don't, right. And I don't know who owns this. <laughs> that is mine. But hey, John, I know you're probably not watching this on Facebook, but what firearm, what pistol am I holding up oh right now? Oh my God, what do you think, John? Take a wild guess. It, it, it's a piece of a pistol. He did not say a revolver, so. Yeah, but well, go, no. go back it's to your different. first thought, John. No. Come on, John. <laughs> okay, um, well, it, but, it's boy, not you, a pistol. And my, my hope would be a 1911, but I doubt that no, that's No, 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 oh, come go, on, go back John. with your first thought, John. Yeah, spontaneous. Uh, well, you said a pistol. I know, so but go back to your revolver. Uh, revolver. Model 10, <laughs> model okay, 10, you four, got it. That would be a revolver. There is a difference. Pistols and revolvers. Hey, so. I want to say right now that sometimes I shout out to certain people, and I shout out to Jennifer and Samantha. So evidently, I must shout out so loud that they actually came in. Wow. So we have them in our audience. Well, not only do we have them in our audience, Ed, you have. Hey, my youngest brother, Dean, just walked in. Look at that. That's right. Glad to see you, Dean. Oh, yeah. Wow, and the gang's all here. And minute. our usual. Yeah, and our usual. Yep. And I wanted to tell Samantha that I was saving a chocolate cream filled donut for you. Oh, you're oh, the, the one room. to put that the note. Ed ate that. You better not. I got a sign right by it. <laughs> I saw the sign, and I asked Eric who wrote it, and he said, I'm not too sure. But No, you mm -hmm. didn't need it. <laughs> no, I didn't need it. Okay, because you'd like, be very disappointed. We okay. like to thank our sponsors, Rampart Hosting, Toyota West, Jackson Lawn Care and Egress Windows, The Trigger Group, Black Wing Shooting Centers, River's Edge Cutlery, CNS Engraving, Clean Water Systems, and LEPD Training Facility, all who make this show possible each week. Joining me today in the LEPD studios, J.C., you were on with us um, via remote. Um, you know, we were pretty upset a few weeks ago talking about this judge here in Franklin County, this judge, uh, Jessica DeVarga. If you remember, we had a case where uh, someone attempted to buy a firearm here. We found out the person yeah. had um, just been arrested a couple of days. A restraining order, right? Well, not a restraining order. Restraining. Had been arrested for domestic violence and menacing. Oh, okay. Had their firearm ag menacing, ag menacing. Had their firearm taken in the course of that, and she refused to make that a conditional bond. And he was here trying to buy a gun. We did a little research, and it just we come to find out that uh, the judge. This isn't the first time <laughs> that she's been on the wrong side of, of trying minute, judges to. Judges can't be wrong. Well, no, actually, this was when she was a uh, a defense attorney. Oh well, they're always wrong. <clears throat> <laughs> so if this is when in that course, and, and in this particular case that went to a, a, an a, a Ohio uh, appeals court, right. she was arguing that her um, client, who was pulled over by Ohio Highway Patrol, and I'm not going to get into all the details, provided false information to the officer, had warrants for his arrest, uh, convicted felon numerous times, um, admitted to marijuana use, a trunk full of guns because they were going to the shooting range. And she was trying to get it thrown out, his, um, his uh, conviction for weapons under disability. Just what we want, right? That's yeah. what, and and now she's a judge, and she's doing the same thing. Exact same thing. Yeah. So it's just, it's just some of the, the frustrating, you gotta love uh, you gotta love it. frustrating things we see here when you hear the cry for, for change all the time. Big Ed says to my right, um, speaking Hello. of which, I feel like I'm just on a high horse today. But Big Ed, did you see, and we knew this wasn't going to take long, did you see the activist group? that got in front of the mayor this week, got in front of the mayor, and they are upset that our officers are, um, are out there um, shooting children in our community. Oh, it's, it's terrible. It's out of control. Yep. So, uh, but but they, didn't, they didn't go the next step and say that the, their, their children are thugs. Pulling and they're, guns on police. Exactly. Because I tell you, in my household, in my household, I don't have that concern. I'm Nor just saying, I. my children aren't out there, and it's, I don't, you know, when they leave home every day, I'm not concerned that they're going to get shot by the police. And you probably know where they're at when they're out there, too. Oh, I do. Oh, well, yeah, and you know what? That segues right into what Bernie Sanders said one time when he was speaking at a college, uh, some uh, students, and the question was asked, how would you advise your son if he stopped right. by the police? 
And, you know, and Bernie Sanders says, well, I would very politely ask for his name and his badge number. And, you know, that's, that's not going to go over. And, the, and then he says, make sure, you know, you do everything right or you're going to get shot in the back of the head. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I mean, when you look at these cases, especially here in recent times, they were all, I mean, it's, it's a tragedy. They're, they're kids that are under 21, but they're pulling guns or fake guns on law enforcement. I mean, fake what, or real. You point it doesn't matter. Cop, you expect to get shot. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't understand what they think the outcome should have been. But well, I can tell you what they think it should be. Right. And well, they're out there. Yeah. They have a they have a platform. So, JC. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. After <laughs> the officer gets shot, then he's supposed to return. That's probably right. what they're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really Let him shoot first. A gun pointing at an officer. I think it's going well, to get to what? that. I think we're right. going to get to that. My father and Connor, Phil, of course, sits to my left. Uh, good busy week here again, Paul. I'll tell yeah, you what, it is. I don't, uh, I don't know if it's the election year or what, but. It I think it's been, got something to do with it. I think yeah. it's all the rhetoric that's being spewed out there. People are concerned. They're concerned yeah. that if any of these Democratic candidates, you know, have any shot at the presidency, it is it is going to. They, they don't hide it anymore. They don't no, they hide. Don't. Their, I mean, it, it, they, they, well, just like. Biden this week, they tell you right up front their thoughts on it, and, and there's no there's no discussion. The part about I'm going to take your guns. exactly, and that's yeah. it. That's it. If you missed the show, you can always catch the podcast. That's at six ten wtvn dot com. We're on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Facebook is a great place to watch the show. You get to uh, you get to see all the interaction. Um, Ed gets to talk to you on commercials. Ed oh, uh, does goody, a great goody. job. Goody, goody. Huh? goody, goody. Goody, goody. And, hey, shout out to those Facebook fans that are already out there, Mike. They're all your relatives, man. <laughs> hey, my other brother just walked in, too. Wow. So, so yeah, no, it's a, it's a great place to watch it, and Ed uh, answers your questions out there, and, uh, and it's, it's out there stored. So if you miss it live, you can always go back and watch it. And speaking of that, uh, John, didn't you have someone up there, uh, up way up north in Michigan that says they're watching what? today? This? This is amazing, and I, uh, it's just in a little tiny grocery store in the country. Uh, it's really cold up there, like 20 degrees, and a guy had uh, one of the, uh, I call it the Elmer Fudd hat, the old buffalo plaid hat with the ear flaps and stuff and gloves because it was really cold, and we happened to meet at the dairy counter. And uh, I mentioned my wife's looking for some lactose-free stuff, and they didn't have any, um, and, uh, you know, and he goes, oh, yeah, he said, they don't have any. He said, they'll probably blame that on Trump, you know, and I'm going, uh, I'm going, then he goes, oh, I didn't mean to offend you. I said, oh, you didn't offend me. So I related, and I pulled out my phone, and I showed him a picture, and I said, look, I said, a couple weeks ago, we had the honor of having Eric Trump at our store uh, before it opened for a, a meeting. And he saw that, and honestly, um, this gentleman's name is, is uh, R. Mapson, and uh, he just had his 68th birthday, but he said he was so excited. He goes, I'm shaking right now, and he was, and he took off his glove in a hurry. He said, I've got to shake your hand just for the fact that I was sitting close to uh, to the president's son. And uh, so we, we talked, and he immediately uh, he wanted to write down the, our show on Target, how do I get this? And um, this morning, what, at 7 o'clock or so, you sent me a, a text where he had actually texted you and said, hey, I just checked in uh, the uh, you know to LEPD.com and saw it. It's a wonderful site. And uh, so uh, we now have a follower from a little farm town in, uh, in the upstate Michigan, uh, upper Michigan. So uh, anyway, and that, that adds was really to pretty cool. So that, shout out to, uh, to Mr. Matson there. That was, uh, he was pretty cool. So That's great. And we, uh, we actually see people checking in from North and South Carolina today, it looks like. Really? Um, well, actually, or was that just you? Ed, that was me wrong. messing up. I, I, I meant to say North Carolina. <laughs> okay. I said South. Okay, there ain't yeah, no South I Carolina. Go where it's warm. <laughs> huh? I want to go where it's warm. Okay, I know. I, know I you hear you. You just said that. it was hot in here. In here it is, but I mean outside with this crazy weather. One day it's fifty degrees, then it's not eighteen. Yeah. Well, if you want to uh, chime in at any time during the show, six one four eight two one nine eight eight six is the number, and you're going to want to call it today too because a couple of the news stories we have are uh, definitely thought provoking. And actually, you know what? We have a second here, um, JC. You can help me on this one. I wanted to to tell one story here that that's interesting. That um, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it, it could have really uh, deep ramification if it goes through. But um, the Ohio Supreme Court has agreed to hear, and actually the um, the testimony I think has already occurred this past week. It's to like, hear, yeah, Tuesday they, this week. Yeah. Um, they heard a case concerning an individual who was at home who had been drinking, and they um, his wife had called the police for some reason, and he had uh, he was I don't know if he was cleaning his unloaded guns or he was doing something with him, but he had him in his possession, and he was subsequently arrested for handling the firearm while under the influence of alcohol. 
And in his own home. In his own home. So this is going to the Ohio Supreme Court because he got convicted on it. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how that law is. And my, my gut is, is the law needs changed to say that it's not, I mean, obviously it's not the prudent thing to do to be drinking alcohol and, and playing with firearms, but it, it, I think it's an overreach for being able to come into to someone's home. And, and, and the way the law reads, it just, it doesn't have to be um, intoxicated. It just says under the influence of. So that is, a, you know, yeah, a beer. Yeah, that's, that's codified under uh, the Ohio Revised Code, ORC, and it's in, what, 2923.15, and it talks about alcohol. But it does, it, if you read, you know, what you said that the, uh, if the law is actually written, it's, uh, it, it just, it, it was based on the fact that you can't carry or use. Now, this gun was unloaded, okay? The gun was unloaded, and when he got there, uh, he was intoxicated. Uh, they said they could smell the alcohol. It was early in the morning, but he said he was just getting ready. To, he was cleaning his gun. It was unloaded when the officers arrived. His wife said, no, there's no issue. He didn't threaten me. I was just afraid because he was drinking, and he had the shotgun out. But it was unloaded, and he said he was going to clean it. And they went in. They arrested him. This happened in 2018, by the way. Wow. And now um, it's come to the Supreme Court to discern whether or not I mean, think about it. If, if, if .008, or if it's under the influence, I don't know if it says under the influence, because that's just a sip of anything. If you, right. Uh, but the fact that you can't handle, and I'm telling you the truth, uh, when I clean my guns, uh, you know, if I Sunday, watching a football game, I'm probably having a beer or two, and there's nothing there but cleaning supplies and an empty, uh, you know, firearm. And an empty but beer can. that would make me a <laughs> criminal. Uh, right. So I... It's interesting. So, it is. It um, would. I like mean, I said it'll be a couple of weeks before they write their findings, but uh, yep. and it, it's definitely a slippery slope. I mean, I, it, I can't imagine that. You know, it's yeah. scary. You have or a neighbor is. who who has a grudge against you, and they know you have firearms, and they know you had a beer, and are they going to be calling? So it, there's definitely it's definitely right. something we're going to keep an eye on. We need to jump into break. When we come back from the break, we're going to get to some news uh, with JC and get to Paul Paul's gun of the week. We're on target, broadcasting live from the studios of LAPD Firearms and Range. We'll be right back after the break. Look, it's a socialist. Huh? It's a billionaire. It's a sleepy person. Oh. It's. Oh. oh, You have like one minute here, Eric. All right, one minute. Am I on? Yep, you got one minute. Forty-five seconds. One minute, forty-five seconds. So what's the temp there, uh, M? Hey, Facebook fans, 28. how you doing today? I want to send me a big shout out to my wife who's home today. Took the day off. I don't think she's feeling well, but she wouldn't tell me. But she's watching us on Facebook. Bruce, I apologize. North Carolina, not South. Mike Brooks is watching. <coughs> we got Zane Donaldson here in the store watching. Looking for my buddy from California. Where you at, Hutch? How much time there, Im? One minute. Still one minute? That was one minute a minute ago. What no, happened? No, the kids, Ed. I'm, I'm I, Hey, 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 now. Emily, <laughs> come on. He said you knew what you were doing in there. I do, most days. <laughs> she, she's a good one. Don't make her mad. Matthew, how are you today, buddy? Hey, you lost me once, right, Eric? <laughs> yeah, I know. It. Matt says we need to have Derek DeBross on. I know, you're right. Hey, there's Cece. Cece, how are you today? Love the show last week. What about this week? You got to love seconds. it this week. Okay, here we go. We got 30 seconds and we're back on the air. Oh, but Pawpaw's not here. Well, that's no different than usual. That's true. He's going to come in here and disturb me as he's walking by. All right, Ed, you're off. Good. Join me on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., my show, For the Defense. The Coffle Law Firm is a group of moms and dads who represent moms, dads, or their kids when the police come knocking. Sunday mornings, 11 a.m., For the Defense. Want to make your wrinkles disappear? Botox is just $9 per unit at Ideal Image Med Spa. Terms apply. Your ABC6 first warning weather for today. A mix of sun and clouds, dry and cold, a high of 34. Tonight, mostly clear. Frigid temps once again, though, low of 19. For Sunday, lots and lots of sunshine, breezy and warmer, high of 52. It's currently 28 degrees on your severe weather station, News Radio 610, WTVN. News Radio 610, WTVN. <laughs> Talk 
target. You know, you have to be present when she plays your songs. I was right there. Oh, my word. Camera view. Uh, now you're on it. You don't want me in the camera view. Well, thank you. I appreciate you letting me back on. <laughs> Welcome back to On Target. I'm your host, Eric, joined today in the LEPD studios. My father and co-owner, Phil, sits to my left. Big Ed sits to my right. Uh, Hello, everybody. And uh, JC joins us via phone today. We're going to get to a couple news stories before the uh, end of the hour or stuff. JC, what do you have for us? Uh, I, I, I got to add another Biden thing, because this one, is I thought, was just super serious. Can't believe he said it. Is this, this one was, where he, he killed the rest of the people? He said to rally-goers uh, right before the New Hampshire primary. So uh, he was out there, and this is uh, the, the quote. He, he was actually threatening that the government would, like, lay waste to citizens with warfare if they uh, deemed to exercise their right to keep and bear arms. This is, I, I know it sounds crazy, but this is a quote. The quote is, goes, the fact is, if you're going to take on the government, you need an F-15 with Hellfire missiles. There's no way an AK-47 is going to take care of you if you're worried about the government knocking down your door. Think about that. It's the guy incredible. who's going to have his finger on the nuclear button. I mean, this was a, an actual quote. You can actually watch him say this, you know, like, ha, huh, you don't give them up, you know, you need an F-15 with Hellfire missiles because that's what we have, and we're going to take you out. I, I can't believe threatening citizens before an election would be a, a good thing. But, but honestly, that threatening to use, to use military might against citizens is reinforcing exactly why the Second Amendment exists in the first place. Yes, it does. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, so enough of Biden. Really, enough of Biden. Um, yeah, um, 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 other stories that are out there, uh, and there are uh, a bunch of stuff as usual, but this, is, this has got to be good. Um, you, you, people need to go to the gunfeed.com, the gunfeed, one word, dot com. The lead story was a gentleman uh, named David West uh, actually did his research so thoroughly, and he has come up with the idea, or not the idea, just the fact, that school buses, kids riding on school buses, school buses kill 27 times more kids than school shootings. And he does it not with magic. He shows you exactly what the stats are, what the National Transportation Board is, how many kids go to school. And with the time spent in school, with all the kids in the United States, uh, there's 20 times, uh, 27 times more kids killed in school bus accidents than would be uh, in school shootings. J um, it's, it's amazing. JC, yeah, it's obvious. You know, uh, the kids need to start walking to school. This right. is, uh, That's what you know, we used it, to do. It, it is it, just as amazing, but um, uh, but he but he walks you through it. It's really interesting to see. Really, really well done. Uh, very good. Um, and we we talked about. I don't know. If we're going to do this later. We're going to talk about Mark Robinson later, or you want to do that? No, that yeah, very that'll good. be a couple weeks down the road. We'll, we'll okay, get well, on that. a couple weeks down the road. Yep. we'll 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 hold off on that. Uh, Mr. Biden, um, yeah, Mike. Uh, not Biden. Pardon me. We're done with the Biden. Uh, Mike Bloomberg. Uh, apparently, well, just simply act. wants to buy the. Let's see, uh, he has now put uh, eight million dollars of his money into trying to elect anti-gun uh, representatives in the state of Texas. He did it in in Virginia, and said he was going to do it in Texas. Well, now he's uh, put uh, eight million dollars into funding and advertising for people that are against the Second Amendment. So uh, uh, Alan Gottlieb, who's the chairman of the uh, – uh, actually, he was the founder of the Second Amendment Foundation and chairman of the Citizens Committee Right to Keep and Bear Arms, he just reminded us. He said, he said, this is his quote, he goes, this is the United States of America, not the United Kingdom of Bloomberg. And we should be wary of anybody willing to spend so much money in an effort to put people in office at all levels of government who are politically indebted – to a single wealthy demagogue, wow. and uh, that's just, just really well it, said. It so, is going uh, to. I, I, it's it's, it's only going to get it, crazier, JC, as this year goes on. Well, we got to jump to the it, bio, bottom of the hour of news. When we come back, we're going to get to Paul Paul's gun of the week. Talk about a little bit about range etiquette and something that just came across our desk. We have late breaking industry news that you're not going to want to miss. We're on target, broadcasting live from the studios of LEPD Firearms and Range. We'll be right back after the break. One of the biggest issues for men over the age of 55 is erectile dysfunction. Newly introduced European technology is now available. It has been proven to be over 85% successful. Hey, Em. Yes. All right, Ed's going to talk now, so. All right, cool. How much time we got? Uh, let me check real quick. 30 seconds. What? <laughs> Two minutes and 30 seconds. Ooh. I was close. Awesome. 
All right. Ed, All right. You got it. Facebook fans out there, check in with us. Say hello. Ask your questions. We'll get your questions answered. Or they can call in live on the show right there at 821-WTVN. 821-WTVN or 1-800-610-WTVN. Right. Am I off? Am I still on? You're on. Okay. See, Kat's checking in. How are you, Kat? Haven't heard from uh, your husband in quite a while. Hope everything's okay there. Mike Conley, how are you today? Still haven't seen my buddy Hutch check in yet. It kind of surprises me. He's usually on board. Let me know what you guys think about the news we've already put out about this famous judge we have here in Franklin County. You got to love how she's doing things. You know, I would, you know, I'm not naive enough to think there's not more to the story, but wow, from what we see, it, it sure looks. From a law enforcement standpoint, there should have never been a release to let him purchase another gun. It should have been a conditional bond. Exactly. It should have been. But yet, they'll <coughs> take and go into somebody's house. And take his guns right. and arrest him for under the influence. Or if this, if this guy has ill intentions and goes and gets a firearm somewhere and goes back to the, the victim and harms him, you know the lead story. You know? Oh, yeah. Why did we do this? Why and did then, we let and him it have never gun. goes back to and the judge. Where judges. does he get the gun? Where did he get it? Right. Because in a situation like that, it's probably going to be a gun that was purchased legally. It could have been, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's what's my wife saying here? Ed, you need to bring home milk. That's what you see. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Franklin County prosecutor as well. Well, we got to see what the prosecutor can do about this, but the judge has the final say on that. But he should be fighting that for sure. He was. He, he was. was. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Thanks for your input there, Gretchen. Hey, Eric, you have uh, 20 seconds. 20 oh, seconds. All right. <laughs> Year's winner for best true crime podcast, Man in the Window. Ground zero for the mayhem to come. Open the app and tap podcasts to take the plunge into true crime podcast week from iHeartRadio. Your music, your stations, and number one for podcasts. iHeartRadio. Live from LAPD Firearms Range and Training Facility, this is On Target. The latest from the firearms industry, the products and politics that affect your hobby and liberty. This program may not be politically correct, but it is On Target. Now, your host, Eric Delbert. Welcome back to On Target. I'm your host, Eric. Joined today in the LAPD studios with... Big Ed says, to my right, my father and co-owner Phil is somewhere in the house, even though it is his gun of the yeah, week. He's, he's, he's not nowhere to around. be found. I think he's looking for another chocolate donut. I know it. And JC is, of course, on uh, on the phone with us. Before we get to the gun of the week, guys, I got three things. Three things that are, I'm gonna, one's late it's breaking. Late breaking stuff, right? So, I heard through a reliable source that uh, recently in England... They were doing some testing for new rifles for their military. And in that, the normal suspects were there. You know, uh, FN, Daniel Defense. Six hour. But there was someone else new to the mix. And I'm not at liberty to say the name of the manufacturer, but it is one who hasn't been in the rifle business yet. But produces sidearms for many law enforcement in the United States. And apparently this was a, a, an aluminum 556 five, platform of sorts, and it was submitted by this company. And you're not going to tell us who? No, but it's, you can connect the dots. It <laughs> yeah, was uh, pretty much. It was a company who supplies much of the law enforcement in the United States with their sidearms. And it's Gee, not, and it's not Smith & Wesson. Gee. So Gee. that, watch for more, uh, wow. watch for more to come on that. Something else, too, uh, we are getting in, hopefully the end of this week, um, our non-politically correct shirts. Talk about Joe Biden. Oh, They're yeah. the ones that have the... Horse face liar? Yeah, the uh, lying dog face pony soldier shirts are coming in. And what was that oh, quote from? <laughs> what was that? Oh, that, that was from John a, Wayne. A John, John Wayne. A John Wayne movie. He didn't say it. Right. But it was a John Wayne movie. In okay. uh, this week, uh, the sale, the big sale is coming here to LEPD. 195 guns on sale. All new, 10% off. And then I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't mention... The wonderful deal we have right now on police trades. Yeah. We only have a hundred or so left. Um, they are Smith and Wesson, 
MMP 40s, three mags, back straps, most of them in the boxes, night sights, 275. How can you? We've had that's, two. That's, that's unbelievable. JC, we've had yeah. two people today that. Uh, Two people today that uh, have added them to their – they were in here buying something else. They said, oh, I'll just throw one of those on. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I'm, I'm actually thinking the same. I mean, these guns are just like – even though they may have some holster wear, as, as uh, anyone can tell you, the police do not shoot them that often at all. They're probably not even <laughs> broken in, to be honest. So uh, I know. Yeah. They're, they're great. Great deals. Yep. So that brings us to the gun of the week. Popo, it is your turn for gun of the week, sponsored Eric. by Jackson Egress. Why do you have my gun in front of you for my gu- uh, for your gun of the week? <laughs> I have no idea whose gun it is, but I can't work under these conditions. We got the tallest guy that works for us on the floor under my 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 chair, evidently looking for something. Hey, too, right. tall. too tall. Too <laughs> tall. So, Popo, what do you have there in front okay, of you? Okay, what I have here besides my Model 10 is the Smith & Wesson Model 64 mm. in the three-inch barrel, okay? The um, Model 64 is the stainless steel version of the Model 10, Big Ed, okay? Um, Glad you told me that. <laughs> okay, um, it's a six-shot double-action revolver with fixed sights, chambered in 38 Special, um, and it was the second of all stainless steel Steel revolvers made by Smith & Wesson. What was the first stainless steel gun, Ed, by Smith & Wesson? The oh. Chief Special. Model 60? I know. I bought it when it Mo- came out. Model, Model 60. S- right. Okay. This is the second one that came out. And it was uh, originally offered in two variants, uh, a four-inch taper barrel, which I've never seen that in taper barrel, and uh, with a square butt and a, or a two-inch barrel with a round butt. So I don't know which butt you have, Ed. I think you have a, a round I butt. Have a round one. You have a round butt? Okay. <laughs> no, I think you really I do. I think you have the 64 round butt. I don't know what I have anymore, Eric. because um, he's got too many. <laughs> the um, four-inch heavy barrel uh, version was introduced in 1974, became the favorite with many police agencies. Um, there was also um, there was five variants that were made for the NYPD. Did you know that? Well, I think your My short one is, is all double action. Right, that's the NYPD one. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it is known wow. for accuracy, dependability, manageable recoil. Okay? Um, the three-inch barrel. You know, this, this comes in two-inch, two-and-a-half-inch, and three-inch. You know, plus the four-inch. Now, the, now, they don't make the three-inch anymore. All stainless? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the 64 was stainless. And, and all of yours? My, what, the one I have at home? You have all three of them? No, I don't. I don't. But you're going to have Well, no, you have to ask Eric whether I have them or not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, anyways, um, the, of course, the common is four-inch barrel. Uh, and you can also get uh, the two, you know, you can find the two-inch and the two-and-a-half-inch. Yeah, the three-inch is kind of rare. And so, therefore, it's collectible um, and is probably priced a couple hundred dollars more than all the rest of them. And the thing, the neat thing about the uh, three-inch barrel is, is that it comes with a full ejector rod. Whereas, you know, you get below the three-inch barrel version, the ejector rod is, is not long enough to extract all of the shells. So, you know, you get them out part way and then you have to pick them out. Um, so, anyway, and it's been said that the three-inch K-frame is the Glock 19 of revolvers. Revolvers. Of revolvers. Of or, today, huh? or rather, the Glock 19 is the three-inch K-frame. <laughs> right, there you go. Three-inch K-frame. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, neat gun. Uh, can I pass this to Ed? Yes. <laughs> All right. Might not get and it Pumble, back. I think, I forgot to look up when this came, uh, came in my possession, but I think it was when, uh, I think it was a Father's Day that you gave it to me almost 10 years ago. Well, we pass around between us so many guns that I that I lose track. Yeah, and and so I don't know. We're what trying I mean. to figure out this morning who actually owned it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was it's at my house, so I'm assuming ownership. Well, well, yeah. Now you know the Model Ten, which wasn't really called the Model Ten, came out in 1899. Did you know? That? Oh yeah, because yeah. it was the, yeah. the hand ejector. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. Anyways, uh, very nice firearm, Eric. How much you want for that? Huh? A good <laughs> gun of the week, and I like it so much that it's uh, it's, it's mine. Um, when we come back from the break, we're going to get to our topic of the day, uh, range etiquette. What's in your range bag? We're on Target Broadcasting Live from the studios of LEPD Firearms and Range. We'll be right back after the break. The Mark Blazer Show, Monday at 3. Hope you're happy. One minute and 20 seconds. All right. What, 57.50 or so on the... Uh, 57 uh, never. What? On the out time? 57.40. Well, I'll tell you what. I, don't make me request somebody else. I was saying 57 hey, never hey, so you don't go off air. Hey, oh, perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, is my song coming up this time? Yes, but I can't guarantee it's going to start at that time. Oh, that's okay. That, only because of the chorus. That's what I was looking for. But it's all right. I think things sounded good. The connectivity looks good. Yes. Cross our fingers. When are you coming to visit? Um, actually, very soon, because Zach and I had that conversation last night, how I need to properly learn how to shoot a gun in case something happens. Well, we've been talking about it for a year. Uh, oh, yes, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 20 seconds. Yep, copy. 20 seconds. Your ABC 6 first morning weather for today. Mix of sun and clouds, dry and cold, high of 34. Tonight, mostly clear. Frigid temps, once again, low of 19. Sunday, lots of sunshine, breezy and warmer, high of 52. It is currently 28 degrees on your severe weather station. News Radio 610 WTVN. News, traffic, weather, sports. Columbus's News Radio 610 WTVN. You know why we're playing that song, Paul Paul? I have no idea. Th this is what they played at the beginning of the debate this week. Really? Boy, listen to the chorus here. Maybe. No control. That was the debate. Did you watch that? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, well, I watched I the first half, and yeah. then it really got out of control. It was... It was it was a wreck. They were all stepping on each other, waving their hands like first graders. They didn't have control on any part of that. Well, I thought they did the first part, you know, and I listened to it, and it's really nothing new, you know, when, you, you, you know, right. when they go back and forth. But after a while, you just, you know, like you said, Ed, you know, raise their hands. they got to step on the other person who's talking. And, and they're not uh, talking about what they're going to do there. All they're doing is bashing no. it to the president. Yeah. Now, and, and how they're going to take our guns. And I guess, I guess, uh, you know, I guess with any party, I mean, I guess the, the Republicans did it as well during the, uh, the last election. But they, they bash, each, bash each other so much that whoever gets the nomination is going to have some of the baggage from what they were saying. I mean, that it's ugly. I mean, how are they going to turn and support that person within their own party after they said some of the things they said? And I guess, like I said, I guess that every, every uh, party does that. But... So, uh, guys, can I talk real quick about this? All right. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Go real ahead. quick. Go ahead. Well, no, this was in the uh, Tuesday's paper um, this week, and uh, it has to do with the, um, the mass shooting that occurred in 2007 at Virginia Tech. And, you know, obviously, you know, it's very traumatic for the parents and the students, the ones five. Uh, I think it was 32 people killed and uh, many others wounded. The thing is, is that these parents, and I don't blame them, you know, they've been lobbying for gun control, gun control. And, and, and so the article, in essence, um, these two parents, um, they were happy that some gun control was being, you know, passed. Well, all right. What? Is it meaningful gun control? No, it's not. Now, you know, they're going to limit buying a handgun to one a month. Okay. How's that going to stop anything? And then they want, and then uh, the uh, red, the uh, red flag bill, you know, it's not going to stop it, you know, and it's not going to stop you, it. And, and when you read things like this, you know, you feel, you know, you feel extremely bad for the parents. 
you know, if you have children, you, right. you, know, you can understand. And, you know, and they, and they get a sense of accomplishment. Over when what? The, they didn't do Over anything. what? Right. It's not going They're to stop it. They're trying to put a it. Band-Aid on a hole. Yeah. I know. So, and, and the thing is, it, it just – I mean, and this is a good tee up for next week, Popo, because next week we're actually in a couple of weeks we're coming out with an editorial, not through the papers, but uh, over the internet. And next week we're going to tee it up a little bit, and it's just talking about what should be done to affect uh, gun violence. I mean, there, there's gun violence. Yeah. I mean, you pick up yeah. the paper every day and you look at this, but what can responsible gun owners get behind? And we're going to talk about that next yeah, week. So know, it, think, this stuff is crazy. They, you know, and we've talked uh, time and time again. You know, they don't come. To the people that might be able to offer some solution. Right. I, I will have to say that the current Ohio administration has reached out to us. So we are working uh, yeah. on a couple of different fronts. So I, that, I applaud that. And yeah. we don't have all the answers, but we have a piece of the puzzle, I, yeah. you know? Yeah. And one last thing before I get off my soapbox. I, I, I was really pleased when Samantha and Jennifer came to watch our show. But they brought a book and they're reading. Come on. One of them's not even awake. Supposed I know. Jeez. <laughs> That's all right. Ed's, Ed's family's long gone. <laughs> well, no, they're still here. They're waiting to make deals. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, for the rest of the show, we want to talk a bit about what to bring to the range if you're going shooting and some range etiquette. It sounds pretty elementary, but if you talk to the guys uh, that have been around a while, they'll tell you that there's some essential things that you want in your range bag. And, and JC, I know we talk about this all the time, and, and um, the time. You, you know, as you... As you uh, evolve and go into the range, you, you, there's certainly other things you find that you throw into it. But so what I thought we'd do is kind of talk about some of those essential things and then kind of throw in some range etiquette in there, too, just just for people to know. Maybe that you don't go to the range all the time and, you know, just to know that that it's not uh, proper range etiquette to walk a gun back and forth from the booth to the back, um, even though it might be unloaded. All the other people in that range don't know that, and it's uh, not. Uh, yeah, do you want to have a guy with a gun standing behind you pointing it? Uh, right. Up? No, it, don't think so. And that's why the range officers come down hard on that because you don't know. You might it it may be unloaded, but you're in there with oh, other yeah. people <laughs> you don't know. And yeah, maybe. I'm not going to take that chance. So those are just some of the things. But JC in the range bag, you know, we we've seen all types in here. We've seen grocery sacks, lunch boxes. Metal toolboxes, shoe boxes, <laughs> um, and more. You yeah, just range yeah. bags, and that's Everything. okay. And mom's Pockets, hat box. People come dumping stuff yeah. out of their coats. I mean, it's just yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. a range bag. But I mean, the, get a gun, get a range bag. Uh, some of the essentials. I think we don't even need to. I mean, people realize you need hearing protection. So now do I carry my earmuffs? I just to be a good gun neighbor. I carry extra foam earplugs in case somebody there is having some issues um, then and needs extra protection. Some people wear foam plugs plus the earmuffs. And why so would you do that, J.C.? I ones for them, and it's just one of those essentials that you have. And why, J.C., mean, uh, explain why you would wear the foam plus the over-the-ear ear ones. Well, well, I, I, both. I mean, the, the, they're more form-fitting, and you get a higher noise reduction rate, those NNRs. If you see that symbol, the higher the number, the, 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 the greater the decibels of reduction in noise. And uh, some guns are pretty loud. And if I'm next to a guy with a short barrel 40 or a 12-gauge, uh, I actually sometimes just, uh, excuse myself, go put them in my foam, and then I put my ear foot muffs over it. So it gives you extra protection. They're simple. You just yep. fold them up. You stick them in your ear. They expand. I wash mine out and reuse them you know, a couple times before you throw away. They're cheap. Um, but um, but that, that's why. We have a lot of uh, people that are noise-sensitive. And right. um, in the classes, I said, if you're having an issue – We'll just stop, take a break, and I pass them out if the people that want them in addition to their others. So, uh, anyway, that's why. How about uh, a flathead screwdriver? Simple enough? Well, yeah. Well, whatever screwdriver fits your sights. We get right. a lot of people coming in going, I brought the screwdriver, and it's too big or too small. For uh, mm -hmm. Make sure you bring screwdrivers that fit the guns that you have. If you're adjusting the sights or tightening the grips or whatever you want, figure that out ahead of time and bring that. What about a Band-Aid? Band days. Well, you know what? Always good to have First in your range bag. Yeah. Now, and you're not thinking, you yeah. know, this isn't, you know, for the, you know, some worst case scenario. But it is common to get a little slide bite on your hand and and so yeah. forth. So that that's not a bad thing at all. Of course, we have them here. We have them here. But uh, yeah. that's a good one, Papa. Um, you, you know, JC, how about tape for holes? A lot of times on the, some of these targets, you got a big old target and stuff, and you want to see 
um, you know, cover up maybe the holes and stuff. So just a, a roll of masking and, tape. It's simple. Well, I take and I wrap it around a pencil so it doesn't take up so much room and, you know, not, instead of a big roll in the range bag. And they make black tape also. So I carry some black tape because hopefully I have more shots in the black that I want to cover up than the ones outside of the black. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, black and white. I roll them around a pencil and uh, just take enough, and uh, it uh, works well and doesn't take up much room. Yeah, and the, I tell you, you talk about the range bags, JC. They're inexpensive, and they um, you can. I mean, they have places now where you can put a gun, you know, on the side of them to keep them out of, uh, you know, out from touching the the hearing protection and so forth. Um, so there's you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a nice bag that is uh, that's that works. How about speed loaders and extra mags? Well, yeah, and most of the range bags now, at least the the bigger ones will have uh, a elastic that you can uh, carry your magazines in and of course uh, speed loaders you can uh, those are those are always good things to uh, to have at the range so uh, yeah that's uh, uh, I like both the flat ones would take up a little less room but uh, yeah I think we're most of the ones I bring around but uh, yeah we have a good selection of those too at the store I always throw CLP in the bag too um, just in case yeah you get to a point that maybe the the firearms not running smooth or maybe there's um, you know, it's a little dry, and you're, you're seeing it not going to battery. A couple of drops of that, you know, yep. is good. Again, a, a cleaning kit, I, I think, is essential. And the CLP, which for the folks listening, that stands for a cleaner, lubricant, and protectant. As I tell the people in my class when I do the when I when we teach about gun cleaning, I just said, look, this came up from the government. They wanted one thing that does everything, and I said, so it's 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 great for the range at home. I want an oil that oils, a solvent that cleans, and a grease that lubes. So I, I but for the range. It's beautiful, and it's easy. And not just that, but I carry brushes, a little toothbrush in there, uh, little rods to knock out a stuck shell casing if you have it. I usually use uh, wooden doll rods or uh, or those bamboo uh, skewer things that will fit down the bore of a twenty two. especially. I don't usually have stuff with... You know, they get stuck, especially with the revolvers. But, uh, but is it they're easy to throw in, and uh, you you will need them, or be next to somebody who needs one. Right, so, you, uh, you know something too, to JC. And this you wouldn't always think about, but I have a little flashlight of mine, and the, it doesn't. It it happens rarely, but we've had occasion where the power's gone out. I mean, any range is susceptible to this, but the power's gone out, and you have a range full of people. You know, with, with, emerg- guns. With, with, <laughs> with guns. With guns. With guns. I mean, obviously, the emergency <laughs> lighting kicks good. in, but never a bad idea uh, to do that. No, uh, always carry those. Always. And, matter of fact, you, you, we have such a slide. I mean, I'm not just pushing the stuff we have in the store, but we have these tiny little flashlights that have three, 400 lumens of light, and I always have one of those with me. And, I honestly, I use it more for other people than myself to look in and see what's going on. So, uh yeah, um, yeah, essential. Yep, and I tell you, kind of to what you said, Papa, about the band aids, medical kits. Yep, always a good if you're going to be shooting consistently, whether it's our range or an outdoor range. And this isn't just about going to an indoor range. This could be an outdoor range if you're going to ODNR's ranges and so forth. Um, always good to have a, a medical kit. They're inexpensive and yeah. they can save a life. Yeah, Put one and in your car anyway. Yeah, right, right. And you, this isn't on our list. A key for your trigger guard lock yes or for your padlock that goes through the cylinder how many of those do we have to we have to cut off right because the people can't find their keys right or they forgot to bring them with them. you know one of our good listeners just chimed in and one of the ones we missed ed is eye protection um and oh, we, we of course rent it here you don't have to spend a lot of money on eye protection i mean really any of the ones that are rated for um for safety glasses work just fine Matter of fact, if you wear glasses, uh, oftentimes people just use those, just something yeah. to, to keep it out there, out of your eyes. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on those. You can you know, get a, a pair for 10, 10 bucks and, and be in pretty good shape. That was uh, one of our uh, important uh, lists. That, it it doesn't that get much too. more important than that listener uh, that yeah. asked that yeah, question. You're right. Um, it's something Five else, years. too, that, that we often don't talk about, but is ball caps. Ed, when we were qualifying, they always said wear a ball cap. And that's so the hot brass, especially summertime comes and some of the ladies are wearing lower cut shirts. If you get hot brass that goes down your shirt, you know, your reaction sometimes that's is... That's going to leave a mark. It's going to leave a mark. And yep. you do the dance. And you do the dance yeah. and I mean, you have a fire on your degrees hand, right? they come out of there and yeah. uh, it burns. And I still have a scar on the back of my neck where, where one got in there. I couldn't yep. get out. 
Yep. So, I mean, that's definitely something to consider. Targets, that's obvious, but you can always purchase those here. But if you're going to an outdoor range, I mean, you need yeah. you need something to shoot at. Some of the guys who are into some of the calibers that are more unique, they bring a brass catcher. So, um, you know, just yeah. so they can, yeah. you know, catch their brass. Um, and so, uh, you know, all, these are all good things outside the obvious firearms and, uh, and ammunition and stuff. Some of the etiquette, if you bring your firearm here and it's loaded because it's your concealed carry gun, just simply unload it at the booth. Yeah, um, in the booth, in the range. Downwards. In, down, downwards. Yeah. And there's no uh, reason. Down range. The guys here were going to ask to check your ammo. We don't need to see your gun out in the lobby of the range. Right. You know, just, you know, the ammunition just to make sure there's no steel core or steel case. And that's just for the safety of the range and the integrity yeah. of the range. So those are all good things. It's pretty common sense. And you don't and have to worry about frangible anymore. You no, know, actually, the frangible came into play for rifle rounds uh, when we first opened up. But we kind of did away with that. I think it was in 2015 or 16. We never had it for um, for pistol caliber ammo, right. but definitely for rifles there for a while as we got things uh, settle with the range. So that's it. Just good common sense. We, uh, you know, we can certainly help you with any of those things, too, here at the range. Guys, that's an hour. That's been another hour. It's over already? It's over already. Okay. Can I throw one last thing in? You got about 15 throw seconds. 15 seconds. Hey, uh, this goes out to um, all of my fans out there. Uh, the Blue Knights ride coming up uh, on June 27th. We're sponsoring in, uh, um, Trooper Phillips, who was hurting that crash on 71, the wrong way driver. Oh. Please, uh, please. The burn? Uh, oh, he's got burned yeah. badly. Uh. Please, folks, uh, if you can show up on do June 27th, uh, please do so and join us in the ride. Uh, make donations. And we'll take any help we can great, to help. And we're going to keep yeah. and pushing that. And throw some prayers his way, too, please. That's, right. Uh, the yeah, absolutely. Act. Absolutely. And we're going to keep pushing that, too, as we get closer to that date, Ed. Follow us next week. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we can do to address gun violence in the community. Stop by and see us. Tons of sales going on, tons of classes. We're at 999 at Bethel Road. Have a great week. From the Elk and Elk Studios, if you were injured on the job, call the lawyers at Elk and Elk at 1-800-ELK-OHIO. News Radio 610 WTVN. Drive for better at Dennis Hyundai with the all-new 2020 Hyundai Palisade. Three rows of upscale style and intelligence with fully loaded features comparable with other. <laughs> Are you there, Em? Yes. So uh, here, hold on. Let me. Uh, well, I'm ready when you are. Then I'll tell you something. I am ready. You ready? Now? Yes. How about now? How about now? Yes. Okay, here <laughs> we go. I'm prepared, Eric. I know. Okay, here we go. This is Eric from On Target. This week we discuss what changes need to be made to impact gun violence, and JC has the Gun of the Week sponsored by LEPD Training Facility. Tune in Saturday at noon or live from LEPD Studios on Bethel Road. This is Eric from On Target. This week we discuss what changes need to be made to impact gun violence, and JC has the Gun of the Week sponsored by LEPD Training Facility. Tune in tomorrow at noon or live from LEPD Studios on Bethel Road. This is Eric from Mont Target. Today, we discuss what changes need to be made to impact gun violence, and JC has the Gun of the Week sponsored by LEPD Training Facility. Tune in today at noon or live from LEPD Studios on Bethel Road. Thank you. Hey, what was up with that dude calling in? He was so rude. Really? Um, yeah, he was just trying. Well, he was like, I don't think that's